We'll turn to Luke. Luke 15. You killed a fatted calf for him? My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because his bro this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Thank you, Sandra. Doesn't that remind you of last week's lesson? It's not fair. I deserve better than this. We talked at great length about that. And here we go again. This must be something we need to hear because Jesus keeps <laughs> bringing it up. Big brother here is saying, what's in it for me? I stayed here. How do, how do you guys respond to this story? What are your thoughts? Thoughts are, if I understand this right, that um, when the father is saying that we have to celebrate because he, he was dead and now he's alive, I'm taking it to mean that um, when, the, when the son left with every, all the good stuff, it was all about him. Yeah, what would please him. Mm -hmm. But then when he had nothing left, he felt lowly and, un, you know, undeserving and, and maybe came to a sense of what have I done? You know, I he had great wealth in just having his father and his brother and his family. And that's what he has when he goes back. I, I said also, too, is that he did humble himself. Yeah. He, he didn't want to take the sonship mm -hmm. like he was born with. Yeah. And then he didn't just go back and say, give me because it's yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's not. Kind of like Romans 8 28, where all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose, meaning even wrong things. That, I mean, he had to go through that. Maybe we'd make bad choices sometimes. Too bad that we do. It's not good. But you know what? God can work it around into something good. So it's kind of what you said, Sandra and Jeanette. I can, I can yeah. empathize with all three of them. Okay, as, tell us. As the parent, I, can, I understand the father's pain of his son being gone. Because yeah. when my son was on the run, for three years. Yes. I, it got turned me up. I had to I just in the back of my mind, okay, he's dead. Yeah. So I could just not go. Right. But when he came home, we rejoiced. <laughs> then for the younger son, I can understand that too because I've seen my kids, not that they took anything from me, but how they were into the drugs and not knowing if I was going to get a call from the sheriff saying your kid is dead. But when they came back, you know, all of them are in Christ. Yeah. I've been sick. As the oldest son, that's me. Yeah. You know, this way you can get, you know. Mm -hmm. hey, Come on, hard. yeah. It's hard to accept that you mm -hmm. so for me, I you can see everyone's point in this story yeah even from the father's point of view it's an well, interesting actually, in, in the same aspect the one son took it all and fed his flesh yeah. the other one stayed home he still fed his flesh there was still some rebellion that he he did it mm -hmm. he stayed but he was expecting results. Too. He really was. Yeah, he he was. Selfish. He was working according to the law, which we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. We, our tendency is to do the law. I stayed here. I did the work. I, I, I. Where is it? In uh, verse twenty-nine. Look at that. I, 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 I. At least four eyes and me's in my translation, which is New King James. And there's also a you, but the way he said it is accusing. Mm -hmm. I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandments. 
Yeah. Well, we can't say that to God. We do transgress. He's prov made provision for us. But I've been serving you. Do we serve him 100%? No. Do we never transgress? No. Yet you, <laughs> you never, never what? Gave me a young goat. Yeah. He was so indignant and so disrespectful. But did he ask? To his father. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, he didn't ask, no. did he? I felt like the older brother stayed waiting for my dad's approval, felt unappreciated, but all along he was telling me, what do you really want? I can give it to you. I can sustain you. I will support you. Tell me. Oh, that's beautiful, Jade. When the father said, everything I have is yours, I felt that. Thank you, Jade. That's beautiful. Yes. Well, I think all of us can identify. The brother who demanded all this, he had this vision in his head that the grass was greener on the other side. And um, he had money in his pockets. He was off and running. But guess what? That money, just like with last week's story, who did it come from? A very generous father. Mm -hmm. He gave that money to him willingly, even knowing that it was a very foolish move. But he was generous. And that was the money that he had, just like the uh, laborers last week. Mm -hmm. Some worked all day long, mm -hmm. earned their denarius, Others worked for one hour and earned the same thing that the guys that worked all day. Mm -hmm. For those of you who weren't here, that's what we talked about. But the landowner was generous and they were accusing him and mad at him for being unfair. For being unfair. Yeah. What's that? A new message. Mostly our problem is we limit God by not asking. Well, and isn't that what you said? That's right, Jade. Uh, Linda said that, that he didn't ask. For The Father is clearly illustrating God's love right there. His love is what allowed the rebellion in, in some sense because he was respecting, as I said earlier, the human will. You know, he doesn't want us to be a bunch of puppets on a string. He knows what we're going to do, but he wants us to know and learn from it, right? Mm -hmm. He knew that, that one son was going to go off hunting for greener grass, but he let him go. And even in that, he had a lesson for him and he turned around. Um, Says so when he had spent it all, then there arose a famine in the land. And the son was completely to blame for his wasteful, foolish living. He, he, he could not blame anyone else. He'd been going out to the nightclubs, driving a fancy sports car, <laughs> fancy camel. I don't know. <laughs> but, <laughs> He was living the life, you guys. Hot camel. Yeah, hot camel. Um, but not just, what did she say? Oh, yeah, there's a special name. There's a one hump camel, they've got a name, I, and there's another one, I can't remember the names. But he had a two humped hump camel. Oh, you guys are killing me. <laughs> but, you know, no doubt it was fun while well, it lasted. Sin is fun for a little while. Well, he didn't go home right away either. It's no. just he went and tried to find work. He, he did, to, you know, yes. So and where did he find work? And, and no, he didn't, did he? He tried to take care of himself because he knew he was at fault. Oh, yeah. And where did he end up? With the pigs. With the pigs. Have you ever smelled pig? Yeah. That's what turned him around. 
Patrons were forbidden. Right. They were. I thought that was interesting. In Leviticus. Um, do I have it written? Leviticus, write this down, 11.7. That is where we find out what Jewish people thought of wine. And here he is thinking of eating with the swine. That should tell you that was not like it would be with us because we don't have that thing about the, about pig, although they are disgusting. But to him, it was double disgusting because he was a Jew. He was. You're right. There was no lower place. No. And some of us here tonight have actually been there. We have been where we are so low, we cannot go any lower. And sometimes when we're praying for people who just seem to resist the call of God in their life, and we try to protect them and pull them back and don't let them go, which this father was very wise in doing that, what we can be doing if we don't just give them over to God open with open palms. You know, a butterfly, if you let a butterfly go, mm -hmm. it'll come back, the old saying. Mm -hmm. But if, if you hold on tight, you're going to kill it, and it really won't come back, you know. So the father was holding him wisely with an open palm, and he came back. And it took something really bad to turn him around. He found out that the green grass had dried up. Don't we do that? We always think the grass is greener on the other side. And it's usually not. If we only knew, you know, how bad it really could be. Uh, we, the, the best thing we can do is, you know, cry out to the Lord. Help me get through this, not around it, but through it. And sometimes we just cry out, why? Why? Someone told me this this week, someone that many of you know, a sweet friend. And she said something to me in a situation that she's going through a very hard, 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 hard season in her life. And she said that she was reading something that said, um, don't ask why, ask what. And I said, what? What, like, what do you mean by what? Ask what? And she mm -hmm. said, what next, Lord? Don't ask why, mm -hmm. ask what next? This has happened. What good does it do to ask us for us to ask why? Mm -hmm. Has that ever helped anybody? We don't know why. Don't ask why, she said. And this was hard for her to say because she is asking why. This is a terrible thing that's happening to her. And I just, I just hugged her. It's like, oh, what how that must endear her to the father's heart. To hear her say that this is bad what is happening right now but i'm not going to ask you why lord i'm going to say what's next right so you're right so it is what it is what is next or what's your will yeah right what do you want me to do with this lord Show me what's next and help me to walk it out. Mm -hmm.